Hello everyone. So with the announcement of Ableton Live Suite 10, that came with some new features for Max for Live that enabled you to access both external audio inputs and outputs as well as routing uh, to multiple tracks within that. So they're still working on releasing more documentation about that, but I kind of started diving in and figuring things out with the help of a lot of the people on the Ableton Live beta forums. Um, so huge thanks to the community there for making all or helping all this be possible. But I wanted to share some of the devices that I've got so far. Um, these are still very much in beta, so uh, they may work, they may not work for you. Um, but I thought I'd get them out there, get your guys' thoughts on these and uh, yeah. So a um, handful of them here, they're all available through my website, just Daniel R. Dahan dot com slash devices or just clicking on the DRD devices at the top of the page there. So it'll bring you here and you'll see download links to every single one of them um, including some of the devices that I released a while ago, some of the older versions of things on here that uh, are still available. So the new ones are these first couple here, the DRD Pitch and Gate CV version 2, the DRD Line Sequencer dot MIDI, and we're still on the very first version or iterations of that. Um, kind of a utility for working with that line sequencer, the X trigger, and for working with analog gear, uh, a external clock generator, as well as a face lifted version of the ARP.MIDI to kind of match the new look of the new Ableton and the new devices. Um, so let's start with the uh, line sequencer. And in other videos, I'll go on and look at some of the other devices we've got here. So let's jump over to the new version of Ableton. Here it is, it's beautiful. Let's clear this out. And let's go grab the new um, wavetable synthesizer and we'll use this as our sound source. And then let's get our keys going here and get rid of our browser. Now let's go with that new nice shimmer mode. Beautiful, and then we'll collapse it down. In another video, maybe we'll look at the wavetable more in depth. Um, but uh, you can drag and drop in uh, from the downloads folder the DRD line sequencer dot MIDI version 1.0.03, and here it is. So um, what the line sequencer is is a um, essentially an arpeggiator that allows you to use just simple lines of text to describe the rhythms or the patterns that you want it to generate. So first of all, it needs some sort of um, MIDI input or an external input from that DRD X trigger to get it to start actually firing. So I'm gonna start by creating an empty MIDI clip and the note that this MIDI clip is actually, or the note that this MIDI clip contains will be the root for this um, device and also there'll be some other more important things about clips that we'll look at in a second. Um, but let's just give it um, one measure of C3 repeating its 16th notes. And I'll shift tab back over to my devices. And so now the layout of this thing is this box or cell on the left hand side here represents our pitch patterns. So each of these numbers here describes a transposition either up or down from the incoming note that we're receiving, either from the MIDI keyboard or from the clip that's currently playing on this track. Then down below, we can see what note it's producing as well as in our series of patterns, which pattern are we in and then which step within that pattern. Then the right hand side represents our rhythm patterns that are divisions of the incoming notes. Right now we've got it set to one, so that means every time we receive a note, we're going to advance through our melodic patterns as well as produce or send a note out of our arpeggiator. And then same thing down below here, we can see the current value of this pattern and then where we are within the pattern. So which pattern and which step within that pattern. Then the lower boxes here are just how often do we advance from one pattern to any other patterns contained inside of this. And this will make more sense as we get going here. And if we click on the little disclosure triangle over here, we can adjust things like the produced velocity of the note, as well as the duration of the notes generated, and then set up our trigger source, where we can have it be either the MIDI input by default, or if we click on this, it's no longer missing, listening to that internal MIDI, and instead listening to some external um, device in this case only the DRD X trigger. We'll look at that later. So let's go back to the MIDI input. 
So if I just start this clip playing, and let's actually edit this down. We'll talk about the syntax in a second here, so that we're just repeating the zero steps of transposition from the incoming note every single time we receive a note. We'll just hit play. So there now you can hear we've got just a repeating pattern of that same note over and over again. Now if I change this pattern, for example, maybe the first um, step of this note pattern will be to play the note with zero steps of transposition. And let's also play that same note but transpose up three semitones and then space, and then that note again but transposed up seven semitones, and then let's call this the end of that pattern. So the way we indicate that that's the end of a single pattern is that kind of backwards arrow there. <clears throat> um, making sure that we've got spaces in between each of our values um, and then finally a space before we get to that end marker down there. And if I hit return that will input this pattern into the line sequencer and we'll start here at moving through this pattern. So we could add a second pattern. I can either click below it there or if I'm already editing up top here I can just hold shift and hit return and that will advance onto the next line. We could change this pattern, maybe we could stick with our minor scale, so we'll go down um, four semitones, then we'll play the original note, then up three semitones, and maybe back to zero, and then we'll call that pattern to a close, and now I'll hit return to enter this pattern as well into our list of patterns. And now every 32 times we get a note, we'll advance on to the next pattern. We can see that we're back in one, and after 32 repetitions of one, we move into pattern two, you can see the steps within that, so on and so forth. We could change the rate at which we advance through those patterns. We could go 32, then maybe eight, and eight, and then 16, and then hit return to enter that pattern. Now you can see that we move through these patterns a little bit quicker, sometimes a little bit slower at whatever division of our incoming note or trigger we've set down here. So uh, that's kind of the pitch side of things and we can have as many of those as we want to always separated by the uh, backwards arrow there. We can change our rhythm patterns. We could say let's have it do every second note received or every second trigger received. We can say go two, one space, one space, three space, five space, one space and then hit return to enter that pattern. We could add an additional pattern, maybe one, 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 three, return. Now every 32 notes received, we'll switch back and forth between these two patterns. We can see which pattern we're at and which step we're at over here. We can change how quickly we move through these patterns. Maybe we'll do every um, 16 notes received. And then in order to preserve this kind of um, session view workflow where we've kind of got clips that can contain different patterns, I've set this device up so that um, it remembers or it's aware of which clip is currently playing up top here and we can save um, different patterns within different clips and it does this automatically which also means you need to be aware that of uh, what clip is currently playing and that all of that data is going to be saved with that clip automatically. So I can come up top here and I can just option drag this down to get a new clip going. Let's get this one playing. Because it's a new clip it will adopt whatever pattern was currently playing and now we can come in we could change this and it will do 0, uh, 3, 7, 10, 7, 3, as our pattern, and then let's just select all this and go back to one for one. And now there's our pattern for this second clip. When I go back to the first clip, you can see it automatically jumps back to the pattern that we had generated in that clip. We trigger the second clip. There we go. Cool. So that's the basics of it, of describing the, the melodic patterns, describing the rhythmic patterns, then how quickly do we move through all of those or both of those patterns. Uh, if we expose it out here, we can also set this up to be with an external trigger source. So if rather than saying MIDI input, I can click on that and go external MIDI source, and now I'll need to go grab 
my uh, external trigger, which is an audio Max for Live device. And then we can set this up to listen to some external input, um, adjust the settings um, to trigger the way that we want to. So um, how sensitive is the amplitude? How sensitive is it to pitch changes? Do we want to filter that in any way? Um, as well as how often do we want to allow it to send a trigger? So uh, if we only want it to be um, at least 10 milliseconds in between every received one, or maybe at least one second in between every trigger, kind of depending upon the material, the sonic input that we're working with this. And this one is still really in development. I'm kind of tweaking it. It works really great with um, external gate signals from Eurorack synthesizers, but it isn't quite honed yet to work well with uh, more musical materials or more complex materials than that kind of signal. But we're just getting this, or I'm just getting this out there for you guys to start messing with it and starting and start creating with it. Um, so if we set this up to some external trigger, we can close this down. And now this is the address that it's going to send to you down here. So we can change this to anything we want. And now that is everything that's listening to everything, anything we want is going to be triggered by this. So we can come over here and use this for the um, trigger to this device over here. So we could change this listening port to be anything, anything we want. Return. Looks like I need to resize that box in there, but that should be in there. And now every time this triggers, we'll be triggering this over here as well. And we could also set up an additional external trigger trigger to reset the pattern back to the first step of the melodic sequence and the first step of our rhythm sequence and the first step of our advancements through that. So that's the DRD line sequencer um, and the DRD X trigger. Again, there's uh, these things are still kind of fresh, so I'm still developing it. Um, no guarantees at how quickly I'll be able to develop this because this is just something I'm doing with my spare time in the evenings. Um, but I uh, wanted to get this stuff out there and let you guys know it's here. So by all means, dig in, start using it. Um, but I've only been testing these in Ableton Live Suite 10. So if you're in an earlier version of it, um, the line sequencer should work for you, but the DRD X trigger will not because you'll need Live 10 for this option to be able to grab signal from another track or an external source into the Max for Live device here. So uh, anyways, uh, let me know what you guys think, either in the comments in the Dropbox download links or in the comments below this video. Um, have fun with this and maybe turn it into some of your own devices and share those with us as well. All right, see you guys in the next video.